Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. This episode is a continuation of a roundtable discussion of the risk management framework regarding step one, categorization, specifically focused on industrial control systems. Since this first step is the most important in the process, we are presenting this review in a multi-part series. This particular podcast will discuss the process of aligning the security objectives. So in the previous slide, we discussed information types. And I think it's safe to say that we now understand that the information type serves as the basis for a security program. And we understand that we're not looking for ATOs anymore. We're trying to look for the light at the end of the tunnel, which is that program. So after we've established our information types, I'm assuming what next is our security objectives. So help me understand, what exactly is a security objective? Well, the, the security objective is the, the impact mm -hmm. that uh, the loss would have on your system okay. as it relates to the confidentiality, mm -hmm. the integrity, and the availability of the data and the information. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so, so and, and we alluded to this a little bit earlier mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the previous slide, mm -hmm. that what you're offered mm -hmm. in, in 860 mm -hmm. is a baseline set of security objectives gotcha. uh, based on the information types that, that you process within your environment. Mm -hmm. And if you process five, six, seven different types of information type, mm -hmm. um, you take the highest impact mm -hmm. of each category mm -hmm. and that becomes the impact levels mm -hmm. or the security objectives for your environment. Gotcha. So that follows the Federal Information Processing Standard 199. Right. Kind of like lays all that out. Yes. Okay, I, no, I, I definitely understand. So I'm a system owner, I'm in a control system environment, I'm being introduced to all this new stuff. I now know I need a program, I got my information types, you know, I followed 199, I looked them up in 860, vetted it with my users, vetted it, and we know these are the types, right? What is the purpose of getting this watermark. If I know my types, who cares? Why do I need this high watermark, this security objectives defined? What does it do? Okay, but before I get to why you need that high watermark, yeah. understanding what information types you process mm -hmm. or that system process yeah. is just the foundation. Okay. What we also have to look at is we have to look at what other information types mm. do I gather mm. What other information types do I collect mm -hmm. in my environment, mm -hmm. whether um, intentionally mm -hmm. or through passive means, mm -hmm. um, something is being transported through my environment? Mm -hmm. It still has to be protected at the level of whoever owns that data. Ah. So this is where we start okay. looking at the aggregate mm -hmm. Um, impact levels, right? Mm -hmm. We look at the impact levels that are particular to my environment, yeah. but other impact levels that are coming into my environment, mm -hmm. if we're going to house, if we're going to transport, mm -hmm. we're going to uh, 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 hold that data, mm -hmm. then we have to make sure that we're protecting it to that level. Wow. So it may require us to raise our impact level mm -hmm. to be able to hold that data. Understood. Um, and this is, this, this is one of the things that I I see is 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 missing mm -hmm. is that we're not considering the aggregate of not only my data but the other data that's in my environment. Yeah. So so once I really understand all the data that's in my system, mm -hmm. I still have to look at my mission. Mm. And once I look at my mission, then I can determine whether or not I need to raise a security objective for any one or, or potentially all of the confidentiality, integrity, or availability gotcha. for the system. Mm. Okay. So what? So knowing now that I have to consider other data owners, um, setting my uh, security objectives at a certain impact level, and communicating what that impact looks like to the AO, what does that now serve? What purpose does this categorization now serve for me, my system, or maybe the operating environment as a whole? Well, it, it, serves, it serves as a way of identifying the level of rigor that mm. I have to put into my environment okay. to be able to meet my mission, be successful at my mission. Gotcha. Um, because if, if I have 
if I don't consider it and mm -hmm. I don't have the appropriate impact levels, mm -hmm. then the resultant set of controls that are going to be applied to my environment will create a hole or create a gap in any type of mechanisms or, or measures that we put in place gotcha. to protect the data and the environment. Mm. So truly the security objectives is, is that crossroads to mm -hmm. mission success. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not done accurately or appropriately, mm -hmm. or even honestly, mm -hmm. then you're gonna have holes in your program and then your, your impact levels will have uh, an, imp an impact, <laughs> <laughs> will have an impact on your, uh, you being able to successfully operate. I, I definitely see that. I mean, uh, you know, if, if, if you've done the best job you can as a system owner in a control environment and you've queried your data owners and you've looked at all these different organizations that help support your mission that either share data with you, they establish data, you store that particular data or whatnot, and you've come to a impact level for all of your security objectives and now you have a categorization. Um, I definitely understand that if, for instance, there was a data owner that you didn't consider. You knew about them but you didn't consider. I've seen situations where particular data owners are, are not responsive, where uh, someone is wanting to uh, interface with maybe a service provider. That service provider is the one who then sends information in, pulls information out, does analysis, and then shares said information with you and maybe upstream to another tier within your organization. And that particular data you may not necessarily own, uh, but it has a different protection level than what your particular system operates right. at. Uh, aggregate of data and prior to baselining this categorization that system owner can sometimes and has made a conscious decision not to elevate their impact levels because they believe the cost would go up or they believed it would be too difficult to maintain in their environment um, so absolutely doing that immediately misses out on several requirements um, I don't think and RMF, they wanted us to uh, try to identify the requirements for every single information type. That amount of rigor is way too costly. If I have 15 information types, I mean, how do you go through and try to figure out every requirement for each one? Uh, rolling them up to a high watermark gives us the ability to then go to NIST 853. And just based off of the watermark, we can identify what requirements as a minimum are needed in order to minimize risk. Right. Well, that those security objectives mm -hmm. paints a paints a, a, a common perspective mm -hmm. across all systems that function within the risk management framework. Okay. Every system that functions or that has a security objectives mm -hmm. of low, 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 mm -hmm. they will all have the same picture. Yeah. The execution of those controls in that environment may differ, mm. but protection mechanisms will be the same across the board. Sure. Um, whether it's low, 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 mm. high, 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 low, yeah. moderate, high, whatever it is, mm. understanding those security objectives gives the system owner the opportunity to understand mm. what other systems, mm -hmm. what protection mechanisms other systems have mm. for their data. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that. I mean, it's almost like setting a baseline insurance policy, right? If we know that if we live in a high tornado area, all the houses who have insurance in that particular area will have this type of tornado type damage insurance. Sure. Yeah. Um, and if there is somebody to build a house there, when you procure said house, you understand that, hey, it better come with this type of insurance or I better be able to get this or else I won't be able to operate in that type of home. I won't be able to operate in that area with my house, right? And, and I'm glad you brought that up. Mm. Just, just imagine this for a moment. Okay. Just imagine for a moment. Mm. You, you, you own a home, you own a rental home. Okay. And the house is paid for, but whoever lives in that house, mm -hmm. you make it incumbent upon them to get insurance that's gonna cover your structure. Okay, all right. Well, they didn't understand the amount of insurance you wanted them to have. Gotcha. And we'll just call that the security objective that you set for the house. Mm -hmm. 
They didn't understand that. So they created their own security objective. Mm. And they said, it's low, low, low. Mm. Based on how much it would cost. Mm. So now a tornado comes through, mm -hmm. blows away the house, mm. goes to the insurance company, mm. and they get one fifth of the price of what it costs you for that home. Mm. This, this is why it's greater than cost. Mm. The impact to loss mm -hmm. has to be considered in your environment mm. and not how much it's going to cost to implement or raise the security objective. Gotcha. Because there's going to be a gap mm -hmm. in the event that something materializes, mm -hmm. you will not be able to recover from it. I understand. And thus, the security requirements often serve as a purpose of resiliency, not just protecting from compromise or protecting from risk actualizing. That protection is really defined as how soon can you be up and operable. Right, the recovery yeah. from that. Yeah, the recovery right? from The recovery it. from it. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if the hospital or the, the electrical system mm -hmm. um, that was being used or the system used to, to monitor the electric. Uh, electricity going into the hospital. Mm. Just imagine if 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 that went down, mm. would they want that to come back up? Oh, absolutely. As soon as almost, possible. Uh, yeah, that redundancy switch needs to be almost negligible. Right, mm. microseconds. I need to see yeah, switches. The recovery point objective and time objective need to be very low. But if I just said, you know what, it's going to cost me five hundred thousand dollars to have a backup generator that comes on in 0.67 microseconds. Mm and gives me 45 days of, of, of power in mm -hmm. the event of, and it, it's gonna cost uh, me a lot of money. It cost me $500,000 for that generator. Mm -hmm. Well, I just categorize it lower and then don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. You lose power in the hospital, mm -hmm. there's six surgeries going on. Right, yeah, exactly. And, and that in and of itself is that crossroads. Yes. And that is that accountability and responsibility of the system owner to take a very honest look at the mission that this system is supporting. Query your data owners. Query the other users of this system. And truly ask yourself, are the minimum requirements that the National Institute of Standards and Technology has set forth for these information types sufficient for the resilience of your mission and your system? and the protection of your mission and your system. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content informative and useful. If you would like to provide feedback or comments, please visit our website at www.csiac.org, where you can also find additional content to review. Thank you. Did you know that CSIAC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? Come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars.